I mean, those games over with. So, you know, it's a whole different game now. The refs can't call those fouls that they call them. So it's going to be a lot tougher. Yes, there is a different mindset. You know, there's definitely a different mindset coming in to the playoffs this year. Um, you know, last year, in the, when you're in the play-in game, it's literally like try to survive and advance like NCAA tournament style. So, um, you know, you don't have the same amount of like preparation or, you know, whether it be mental or physical uh, as you do when you have a week to prepare for the playoffs. This is what we want. This is what we, you know, we worked for all year. Now, we know, now it's time, you know, regardless of who we play, it's, uh, nothing is going to be given to us. And, uh, you know, that's the beauty of it. That's why we want to be where we want to be. And we want to we win a championship. So it's going to be hard. And that's great. You know, let's, let's get to it. All right. I love what Rudy Gobert just said right there. It's going to be hard to win a championship. And if the Wolves want to win a championship, they got to do the hard things. And that's start, yep. starting with beating a good basketball team. So we have to have hard conversations. So I brought in Henry Lake <laughs> because he spent no one's better in town than you with this stuff. So let's dive right into it. Cats back. Is that a difference maker for this team taking on the Phoenix Suns? Difference maker? No, I wouldn't say Ooh. difference maker. Okay. I would say that him coming back gives you more options. Mm -hmm. It gives you more versatility. It's an extremely talented player, right? So mm -hmm. you've got more depth, right? Yeah. But to think that you're going to get past the Phoenix Suns just be just because Carl Anthony Towns is back doesn't mean that at all. Well, see, this is why I asked you that question, because when you think of the Phoenix Suns, you think about Devin Booker, you think about Kevin Durant, you think about Bradley Beal, mm -hmm. maybe Bobo if he gets in, but he's not really doing not much really. center-wise. <laughs> and then Yusuf Nurkic. That's it. That's yeah. all you think of. So when you think of Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert, and then this other guy, Nas Reed, I feel like he's the difference maker then, don't you? Yeah, I think that Nas Reed, he's definitely going to have to step up. Yeah. And, and what I mean by stepping up is we know that he has the ability to score baskets, yeah. right? He can be a bucket getter. But he has to be consistent. Right. And I really feel like in the last month of the season, he's really been inconsistent. He's been on the roller coaster. Yeah. And he's been emotional at times. So mm -hmm. I think that he's got to settle down, stop complaining, and get into it with the refs, and just kind of focus and lock in. And, and one of the key things for Nas Reed to me is he has to be efficient. Yeah. There are times where you look at the box score and you'll watch the games and you'll see that he's 10 of 14 or whatever, mm -hmm. or you'll see that he's 7 of 13. And that's cool. But regardless of how many shots he makes, he has to be efficient. It can't be a 7 for 20. He's just chucking. Mm -hmm. He's got to go out there and do the little things as well. Well, what I think I like about this Timberwolves basketball team is I feel like they are a true two-way team. Like mm -hmm. Anthony Edwards, rarely do you see a superstar go out and go get you almost 30 at night and then come down and go defend the team's best player. So tell me what you think Anthony Edwards has to do in this series to make sure the Timberwolves get to the second round. I think that – see, I'm not concerned about Anthony Edwards. He is the person that I'm least concerned concerned about mm, okay. with regards to the Wolves because you know and we say this in the most complimentary way is that he's got that dog in him, does, right like like he he's does. gonna step up him and Bradley Beal were getting into it today Man, on, on the court it. and so like when when you look back to last year in the postseason against Denver I mean, he was attacking. Right. He was ready for the fight, and I think he's going to be ready for the fight against Phoenix. So that's why, like, the post-game comments today with him and talking about, yeah, you know, we, we keep losing to Phoenix, but that's not going to really carry over into the postseason. I'm not worried about that with Ant. Why won't it carry over into the postseason, though? Because when you look at this team and th their ability to score, mm -hmm. Bradley Bill, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, who is stopping those guys? You know, the reason why I look at it and I have to be a little bit optimistic for the Wolves is because of something you just touched on, the depth. Mm -hmm. The fact that the Suns don't have any depth on their team and the Timberwolves do, right. I think that that is advantage Timberwolves. Mm -hmm. Now, clearly, Kevin Durant's going to get his. Mm -hmm. Devin Booker's going to get his. Absolutely. And Bradley Bill, you can't have him kill you too. Because no, today he went for, what, 36? 36. So you got you to gotta, you gotta stop somebody. And I think that Bradley Bill is a guy that you have to try to control a little bit. But I think that the depth for the Wolves is going to be a problem. And I also think that, quite frankly, we have to take care of the basketball. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't have a game like today where you just turn in a basketball all over. And I think I put out a tweet, and I was like, man, this version of the Timberwolves is completely clumsy really here in the first half. So they have to take care of the ball. And that's what Anthony Edwards said after the game. He's like, we can't turn the ball over. He's like, it is what it is. These games are now behind us. He said they will be ready to go. Mm -hmm. One thing that he mentioned was Kevin Durant playing the four and sw forcing them to be in a lot of pick and rolls and a lot of switches. Do you think that the Timberwolves stack up defensively against this team? Uh, I think that if you look at the way, because this is a tough matchup, it and I'm is. glad that's a, that's a really good question. Um, now with KD, because KD's <laughs> no going to do whatever he wants. With him, yeah. But I think that 
we have to look at it on the opposite side mm -hmm. and say, you know what? There's a way that we can attack them, too. Right. If you watch today and if you watch the way that things have played out over the course of the season, we have an obvious mismatch, mm -hmm. and it's Rudy Gobert. Yeah. Rudy Gobert, they have no answer for Rudy. Now, I'm not saying that Rudy's got to get in there and he's got to get 20 shots, yeah. but when no. your offense gets a little bit stagnant, you got to feed the big man. I think we also have to put this out there, though. In three games versus the Suns this year, Anthony mm -hmm. Edwards is averaging just 14 points a game. He's averaging nearly 28 points a game against their That won't last. Team. Not in the postseason. Come on now. The Ant-Man, he's going to be the Ant-Man. I'm riding the Ant-Train, <laughs> and I'm riding the Henry Lake train right now. We got 